Hi friends, it's Christopher here and tonight I'm reading out some cosy Victorian Christmas stories. These stories really reminded me of Charles Dickens. So if you like those type of period stories, I'm sure you'll really enjoy these ones too. I've put relaxing fire sounds in the background to give you that warm and cosy feeling. But if you would prefer a version without music, it's now available on Sleep Cove Premium at sleepcove.com slash support. If you have any stories you would like to hear this time of year, let me know in the review or comment section. I would love to know what you want to hear next. So please remember to subscribe and follow the show. And let's begin. What happened Christmas Eve? It was Christmas Eve and the Frost Fairies were busy getting ready for Christmas Day. First of all, they spread the loveliest white snow carpet over the rough bare ground. Then they hung the bushes and trees with icicles that flashed like diamonds in the moonlight. Later on, they planned to draw beautiful frost pictures on the window panes to surprise the little children in the morning. The stars shone brightly and the moon sent floods of light in every nook and corner. How could anyone think of sleeping when there was such a glory outside? Jessica and Fred had gone to bed very early, so they might be the first to shout Merry Christmas, but their eyes would not stay shut. Oh dear, it must be most morning, said Fred. Let us creep softly downstairs, and maybe we'll catch Santa Claus before he rides off. Hand in hand, they tiptoed to the dining room and peeked out the big window. Surely, surely, that was something climbing up the roof of Cousin Nelly's house. It must be old Santa. Fred gave a chuckle of delight. To be sure, the reindeer were very queer-looking objects, and the sleigh was such a funny shape. But the children were satisfied. The old fir tree, whose high branches almost touched the roof, knew all about those shadows. But it was so old, no one could ever understand a word of the many tales it told. There's something scratching on the door, whispered Jessie. But it was only a mouse who had sniffed the delightful odours of the Christmas goodies and was trying his best to find a way into the pantry and test them with his sharp teeth. Come, said Jessie, we'll turn to icicles if we stay here much longer. So upstairs they quickly scampered. Papa had been to town on an errand, so it was quite late when he came home. As he was hunting in his pockets for his key, he heard a pitiful cry, and looking down, he saw a big white cat carrying a tiny kitten in her mouth. Poor thing, said Papa, you shall come inside till morning. Santa Claus had been there with the nicest wagon for Fred and a warm sealskin cap that lay right in the middle of it. When Papa left the room, Puss and her kitty were curled up comfortably on the rug, singing their sleepy song. The sun was shining brightly 
in the dining room window when Jesse and Fred made their appearance. Then Fred just laughed with delight, for right in the crown of his new cap lay the cutest white kitten with big blue eyes and wee pink nose. While Standins close by, as if to guard her darling from danger, was good old Mother Puss. I never had a live Christmas present before, said Fred. Now I know Santa Claus read the letter I threw up the chimney, because I told him to bring me a kitten, and here it is. Papa smiled and looked at Mama, and then everyone said, Merry Christmas, at once. Susie's Christmas Present Tell us a story, Nursie, please do, begged two little golden-haired girls as they snuggled on the soft rug before the fire. Did you ever have just what you wished for at Christmas when you were a little girl? Yes, I did once. I was the oldest and had two brothers and three little sisters. We did not have a beautiful home like this. We lived in a little cottage. It was pretty though, in the summertime when the roses and pinks were in bloom. My father had passed away and mother worked for rich people around the village. There was plenty to do about holiday times. It was the day before Christmas. Mother was at the house of a very rich and kind lady. She was going to have a grand party in the evening. Mother told me when she went away to mind the children and perhaps I might have a nice Christmas present. I knew we should have plenty of candy and cake and other nice things from Mrs. Reed's. We often had pretty clothes too, that Mammy and Robbie Reed had outgrown. I'd been wishing for a muff, but I knew Mother could not afford to buy me one. It was hard enough even to get shoes for us all. I thought I should be satisfied with mittens. It was quite dark, and we all sat around the fire. I had rocked Tiddy to sleep and put her to bed. Woody and Joe were playing Cat's Cradle. The rest of us were making believe we were rich and could have all we wanted for Christmas. All at once, there was a heavy step on the porch and a knock at the door. I opened it with Margie and Amy clinging to my dress. A boy shoved a big box into the room and shouted, A Merry Christmas to you. He then ran out of the gate. The box had all our names on the cover, and the children were wild to see what was inside. Wait till Mother comes, I said, and pretty soon we heard her at the gate. She seemed surprised and said Santa had remembered us early. Mother advised us to go to bed and wait until morning to see our presents. It was pretty hard, but we had some oranges and candy, and I put the boys to bed. Margie and I wondered and guessed what was in the box, but at last we fell asleep. You may be sure we were up early in the morning. There were dolls and toys for the little ones, with hoods and mittens, and for me a lovely squirrel muff lined with blue with a soft little boa for my neck. I was a happy girl that Christmas, I can tell you. And now, my dears, you must go to bed or Santa Claus will not be able to find your stockings. Oh, I hope I shall have what I want tomorrow, said Gracie. And I too, echoed Helen. 
and your story was very nice, nursey. Good night, and call us early in the morning. Santa Claus's letter. Christmas was coming. Jamie and Ted had already began to write long letters to Santa Claus. But one thing was rather odd. Both boys asked for the same things. Each little letter ended with, just like brothers. They agreed to only ask for one sled. They would rather write together. Now was not this very sweet and loving. One night, after they had gone to bed, Jamie said, Ted, if Santa Claus brings us skates, Jim can teach us how to use them. Oh yes, and if we get fur mittens, it will be such fun to make a fault. And a snowman, Jamie answered. Ted went, oh, I'll always ride the sled down a hill, and you can ride it up. I guess you won't, Jamie said, speaking loudly. Why not? Ted asked. Because it will be as much as my sled as yours. Yes, of course, Ted replied, but I chose it first. You're a selfish boy, said Jamie. Well then, so are you, replied Ted. I don't care, I won't sleep with you. I'll ask Mama if I can't have the first pick. I'm the biggest, roared Jamie, bounding out of his bed. You're a big, cross cry baby, Ted shouted, jumping out after his brother. Away ran Jamie to Mama, with Ted at his heels. Both were angry, both talked at once. Mama was grieved. Her dear little boys had never been so unkind to each other before. She kissed their hot faces and stroked their pretty hair. She told them how their naughty words hurt her. She showed them how displeased God was to see two little brothers quarrel. That night, they went to sleep in each other's arms, full of love and forgiveness. Christmas morning came at last. Very early, the boys crept out of bed, just to feel their stockings. Papa heard them, and remembering that he was once a boy, lighted to the gas. Each little red stocking was full from toe to top. Boxes and paper parcels were piled around them. Such shouting, such a good time. It seemed as if all their letters had been answered. Suddenly, Jamie cried, Oh, Ted, here's a letter. They put their little heads together, and with Papa's help, spelled this out. My dear little boys, no sled this year. It quarrelled so I was afraid to bring it. I dropped it off the load about a week ago. Get ready for it next year. Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. A Ragged Christmas Feast On Christmas Day, there is a great feast in Dublin, this, you know, is the chief city of Ireland. The feast is made for the children. There are in that city a great many little ones who are very, very poor. There are kind people there, also who look after these poor children. They have what they call ragged schools where many of them are taught to read and to sew and other useful things. Dr. Nelaton is a famous minister in Dublin, and every year he, with other good people, gets up this great feast for the children. About 800 of them came last year. 
Some of these were only half clad, and all were very ragged. They were seated at long narrow tables, and which were covered with white cloth. The children from the ragged schools wore aprons in bright colours to hide their rags. Each school had a colour of its own. These aprons were only lent to them for the day, and the children felt very fine in them. But there were two long rows without any aprons. These were the little ones who had been picked up along the streets. Each ragged scholar had permission to bring all the children he could find, and oh, how ragged and dirty these two were. But they brightened up, just like the children with aprons, when they saw the feast. A huge mug of steaming tea, and an immense bun to each child. Rarely did they have such a treat as this, and how they did eat. Each child had all he wanted. It would have done you good to see their poor, pinched faces beam with delight. During the meal, a large throng of orphan children in the gallery sung some sweet songs. Then after the feast, there were small gifts and little speeches and prayers and more songs. The little ragged ones seemed like new beings in this atmosphere of love. Such a glad day as that Christmas was a rare event in their sad lives. Children who live in happy homes know little about the suffering of the poor. Perhaps if they knew more, such little ones would try harder by gifts and kind acts to carry sunshine to sorrowful hearts. Little Christmas Carolers We are a band of carolers. We march through frost and snow, but care not for the weather as on our way we go. At every hall or cottage that stands upon our way, we stop to give the people best wishes for the day. We pray a Merry Christmas, made bright by Christmas cheer, with peace and hope and gladness, and all they may hold dear. And for all those that happen to pass us on our way, we have a smile and wish them a Merry Christmas Day. <laughs>